Thank you, Senator Lyons. Senator Day. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise to support the second reading of this bill. The National Social Services budget in the last financial year was $140 billion, rising to almost $170 billion by 2017-18. This represents more than a third of the total budget. It is unsustainable. The measures in these two bills are, on our best estimate, worth approximately $12 billion in savings over four years, so roughly $3 billion per annum out of a $140 billion to $170 billion budget, a saving of about 2 per cent. Now I know every little bit helps, but someone has to go into bat for families by trying to save those measures that will help low-income families most. The crossbench was part of the solution on the mining tax debate pushing for the decoupling of the family and low-income support measures, and we succeeded. There will, until the next election, election at least, if not some time after that, be a school kids bonus for those who need it most and a low-income support bonus. And they said it couldn't be done. Well, here we are again with the crossbench endeavouring to play a constructive role in this debate. Now, I make no apology if colleagues get sick of hearing me say this, but I have been clear from day one, and I'll be saying it for the next six years. Debates like this one about Social Security would end tomorrow if the government would stop making it, making it illegal for young people to work on terms and conditions that suit them. Let me repeat that. Debates like this one about Social Security would end tomorrow if the government would stop making it illegal for young people to work on terms and conditions which suit them. The only reason the government has to go down this tortuous path of cutting welfare measures is because they won't let young people do their own thing. Young people working and earning income takes them out of the Social Security spending costs for government and in fact sees them paying income tax, accruing payroll tax in the states and spending the money in the economy to generate GST receipts for the states. Every day I hear captains of industry, commentators and, and others saying Australia needs labour market reform. And I agree. But where I differ is that I want to see job seeker driven labour market reform. I couldn't care less about what industry wants. I want what is best for job seekers. Why not let them pursue work opportunities on terms and conditions that suit them, not suit the government? Young people are beating a path to my door, encouraging me to keep up the fight. Some of the nation's best and brightest young minds want labour market reform where they can take steps towards building up their skills, a successful career, get a house, start a family, travel and so on. Now, there have been various reports that I am trying to find a compromise pathway on this bill, and that is definitely true. The alternative for budget repair, increases to taxes, charges, levies and the like, is just too ugly to contemplate. I support the second reading and the bill, subject to the compromises I have been advocating. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President.